So now we are going to use a slab, an one um, half inch thick by 11 by 17. And this slab I made a few days ago and left it covered on a board with one sheet of plastic. Now we're gonna coax it into a tube with a very, very deep V at the bottom. So there's an extreme overlap at the very bottom of this slab. So we're creating this wedge shape with a very extreme overlap at the bottom. Now, in that overlap, we wanna use our scoring tool to score up the surface of the slab on both sides. We're not gonna need slip here um, in addition to scoring because of the extreme compression we're going to do over this area. So just some um, nice deep scoring in multiple directions and then that extreme V overlap and you'll see down there. So maybe two or three inches of overlap and let it um, let the tube remain open at the top. Um, we are going to kiss those edges together gradually over time. So it might be nice to score those edges as well. So like I said, this slab has been resting. So it's not fresh out of the bag soft slab, but it's a couple days old. Now, you're gonna to wanna to put your fist and a really strong arm inside that tube. And from the bottom up, you're gonna to wanna to push in hard with your, with your rigid rib. So I'm using a rigid blue plastic rib here, but you could use your wooden rib um, and just compressing that clay and coaxing that edge, just to kiss that edge together a little bit at the top. What's really important is that we're establishing a really strong base of the form. So the first four or five inches of this form are going to be the neck of the head, and it's, so it's gonna support the entire, um, the entire head. So we need that neck to be nice and strong. So rigid hand on the inside, extreme compression. I'm tucking in and pulling up tucking in and pulling up, tucking in and pulling up. Once I have um, a nice strong neck, I can begin pushing from the inside out, right at the front where there's still a, a pretty good overlap of clay, I can start to establish the chin and the jaw. So as you can see, the neck is gonna remain narrow. And every so often, I'll just go back and compress the neck again. Um, you can never really compress it too much. You want to be pushing in from the outside on the neck and then from the for the jaw and the chin you want to be pushing out from the inside. Don't worry too much about that front seam. We're going to manage that quite a bit over the next few minutes. Rescoring. Um, so this is a pretty physical exercise. You are really going to be using all your arm and upper body strength to compress this. And as you can see, the jaw and the chin starts to be established. And we know the human skull is a little higher in the back than it is in the front. The front has the jaw, the mandible, and the back does not. So we're going to lengthen the neck in the back. And then we're going to start pushing out the back of the skull, just holding um, the clay in place on the outside and pushing and rounding from the inside out. Gradually, gradually rounding the entire top area of that form. Now we wanna come, there we go, the corner of the, of the jaw, right? Um, and then we wanna, around, we wanna round the entire form from the edge of the neck up. So we don't want it to look like a, a tubular head. We want it to look like a human head and a human head is very rounded. Here I'm working a little bit on um, the nose and then I'm going to just guess. For now, I'm just gonna guess where the brow bone is and just start to sort of um, push in where the eye socket would be. And I'm gonna do that on both sides, compressing, compressing, supporting the inside while compressing, creating a bridge of the nose and creating the forehead and then rounding out the forehead and the top of the head by pushing from the outs from the inside out. I'm stretching that clay. I want to I want to get some cheekbones in there. I want to get some a really rounded rounded head. 
So you'll end up with something that looks a little bit like Bart Simpson if you don't round the head out good enough. And it's never a bad idea to go back and recompress that neck periodically. Don't worry if it splits open. We are going to add some more clay there in just a minute. But for now, we you see how you can start to see the, the head, the form of the head some, sort of emerging now? And what I do is I just move around the head, compressing and stretching and just gradually creating that form. And going back and revisiting the neck periodically. So we really do want to push out the back of the head, the back of the skull, and that kind of counterweights all the weight of the front of the face. It also helps to have that second layer of clay in the front of the neck right now because it's giving us a lot of strength and support there. Incidentally, that doubled up layer of clay inside the neck that we're going to see, um, that can be, be removed later from the shaved away from the inside um, to reduce that thickness and weight once the piece is leather hard. So I'm just rounding, continuing to round and smooth and compress and establish some rudimentary, just the areas where the features might be. Now I can't know for sure until I measure um, if the anatomy is correct, so I'm just kind of roughing it in right now. Roughing it in and just rounding and rounding. Now you see when the clay is stretched from the inside out, it has that, um, that crackly look to it. That's just, that's the appearance of uncompressed clay. So you want to get a rib and um, any rubber rib will do or your sheet metal, your thin um, aluminum rib, not the serrated one. And then you can support the inside while compressing that clay surface. And that will remove those um, that cracky look and um, and compress those particles nice and strong again. So stretching is doesn't strengthen the clay, it's the compression you do afterwards that smooths um, as a byproduct of compression. And that smooth look is nice too. So you still see that we're relying on that um, extreme overlap on the neck to give it structure and strength down there. And every so often I'll just go back and revisit that compressed neck. And that's what's going to keep it from collapsing. That's what's going to keep it from, from, um, from the weight of the head pushing down on the neck and having it ripple or buckle. So we need to remind it quite constantly that it needs to be upright. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm get some clay out of my bag and, um, and, and score up the front of the face where the nose might be. So as you could tell, it was splitting there, so there wasn't enough material. So I just scored it up really well. So the the, um, the, the head itself is the clay that's a few days old. So it's a, it's a soft slab, but it's not right out of the bag soft. But this clay is right out of the bag that I'm adding to it. So I score up really well and then compress really well and just add some extra material where that nose was splitting. I'm still gonna have to add more later, but I'm gonna build it up gradually doing extreme compression in between each little um, bit of clay that I add. Next thing I want to do is establish the top of the head. So I'm smacking together a ball of clay about the size of an orange and then I'm going to make a very shallow little pinch pot. So I'm pinching open this clay from the um, from the center out and I'm trying to get a gradual, I'm trying to build the top of the head, so I'm trying to get a, gra a gradual um, yeah, a gradual little flat bowl there, and I want the clay to be the thickness of the soft slab so that we won't have a discrepancy um, in thickness. And this can be a little bit larger, but nicely compressed. We are just gonna place it on the top of the head so that we can begin measuring the accurate location of the facial features. So you don't want to attach this. First of all, it's really soft compared to the head, so we do we need it to firm up a little bit. Um, but also, we still want the, uh, the availability of getting inside, um, reaching our hand inside that head. So we are going to place it up there, and we're going to remove it. So what I'm doing now is measuring 
I'm measuring the head and I'm going to at the halfway point that's where the eyes belong so as you can see when I roughed in the head I may have placed the eyes a little bit too low so I'm just going to move those now by pushing out the brow bone a little bit lower than where it was now we're going to measure several times to make sure we have the eyes in the right spot but um, right now we're just roughing everything in. And don't worry if the clay spit splits. You can either reinforce the clay when it splits from the inside or the outside, depending. If you need more material, like we did with the nose, then we'll want to um, add clay on the outside. If you don't need more material, and your shape is really nice, except for you, it's too thin in some areas, then you can score and add a little bit of clay from the inside. So here I'm just adding some more clay to the brow. Then I'll place that, um, that the lid, essentially, the top of the head down. And now that I've measured for the accurate location of the eyes, I can add a little bit more clay um, where, the, where the forehead is thin. And this time I'm adding it on the inside. A little bit of clay at a time. Maybe about the size of a large gumball um, scored up on, on both sides and then really compressed into place there. And that shouldn't... Um, that should attach nicely and add some thickness where you need it. We are just going to um, get this head roughed in and then um, remeasure and smooth and continue this way. So we don't want to add any real specific facial features just yet. We want to make sure all our measurements are correct when we store our piece with the top of the head on. Now that when it's slipped and scored into place can be attached as well. So that's a good stopping point for now and um, wrap it well.